أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعهم بأحسن إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا علم إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم شرح صدورنا افتح قلوبنا ونقي وطهر عيوبنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام وصل اللهم على سيد محمد وعلى آله الكرام ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا من طيبات ما كسبتم ومما أخرجنا لكم من الأرض ولا تيمموا الخبيث منه تنفقون ولستم بآخذيه إلا أن تغمضوا فيه واعلموا أن الله غني حميد الله سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة البقرة which is uh, 260 267 he says O you who believe and any time Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه said if you ever hear يا أيها الذين آمنوا فاستمعوا you know, listen up whenever Allah says, Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu. Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu. This is harf nida, and there's a tambih there. Uh, it's the way you call somebody to attention. Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu. It's tambih. You're calling somebody to attention. Listen up. Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu. Anfiqo min tayyibati ma kasabtum. Give out, expend from the good that you have earned. In other verses in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Right? From what we provided them, they gave out. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَنْفِقُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ Give out from the good of what you have earned. You see, again, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honoring Bani Adam. He's saying, give out from the good of what you have earned. How did you earn it? How did you earn it? Allah gave you the qudra, He gave you the ilm, He gave you the taqa, He gave you all the means by which you earn something. So did you really earn it? If, if, if I've empowered you to do everything and then you do it after I've empowered you to do it, do you really feel like you did it or do you feel like this person is the one that enabled me to do this. Had it not been for him, I couldn't have done it. So in reality, الفضل يعود إليه the, the, the real uh, benefit of it goes back to that person. But Allah is saying, أَنْفِقُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ Give out from the good that you have earned. The kisp is your livelihood. Right? But this can be... You can extend this beyond that because you can say your knowledge is acquired. Unless you are a prophet, your knowledge is acquired, right? Prophecy is غير muktasab. You don't earn prophecy. It's given as a mohiba from Allah. But there are knowledges, there are, there are muahib la dunia. There's gifts from Allah, but there's also things that you have earned. Uh, Imam al-Sawi says, لا ينال العلم متعاطي العلم كسبيا كان أو وهبيا إلا بجد وتعب واجتهاد that the one attempting seeking knowledge will not acquire knowledge whether it's kisbi or wahbi those are the two types of knowledge whether it's something you earn or something given to you as a gift it won't be given to you without effort even if you look at the prophecy the Prophet ﷺ before his message came what was he doing? what was he doing? He was meditating in the cave. He was going up and he was fasting and he was in his cave and he was meditating. He wasn't sitting in his house. He was out looking for, for God. The prophecy wasn't earned. He did not earn it because he was meditating. But you don't, even what's given to you as a gift is given from something. That's the nature of, of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that they're given with effort. So, kasbiyan kana or wahbiya. That's how you get either one. So, though you go out and you earn things. Now, this verse is saying, 
من طيبات ما كسبتم from the good of what you have earned what does that mean what's what does that mean if if you have in 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 when you look at uh, verses in the quran you can also look in many of the verses at what's known as the mafhum al mukhalafa right which is the opposite this is the mafhum here mantuq al kitab here allah is saying give out what you have earned so what is the what is the opposite of that what's the mafhum al mukhalafa if it says give out from the good then what does that what is understood there don't give out from the bad don't give out from the bad they give to Allah what they don't want for themselves that's what people do you see people will give their deen what do they give to their deen it's like uh, somebody in in the East uh, he said, my first son, he's brilliant and he's going to medical school. My second son, you know, he's a good student, he's going to engineering. My third son, he's not very intelligent, we're sending him to the madrasa to learn sharia. That's, that's not exaggerated. There's people, that's what they do. The, 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 now, the people that go to sharia college are the people with the lowest grades. They give to Allah what they don't want. That's what uh, Muhammad al-Ghazali, the Egyptian scholar, rahimahullah, uh, there was a, a, a brilliant young uh, boy who was blind. Uh, and they put him in, the, Al-Azhar traditionally had a place for blind people, which is beautiful. In this culture, what did they do with blind people? They had to beg. In the Muslim world, they used to, they had special sections in the Islamic schools for blind, so they could become ulama. Right? And, the, and one of the things that blind people, Allah gave them real openings because they don't have the fitna of the eye, they don't look at the haram, so their hearts remain pure. But this young boy went and he was a brilliant student. And, uh, but they did an operation and he was cured of his blind because it, wasn't, uh, uh, it was a blindness that could be uh, treated. And he got his sight back and he was so brilliant. They took him out of the Sharia school and they put him in to uh, another school to, to head towards medicine. And uh, Muhammad al -Ghaz, Sheikh Muhammad al Ghazali, when he heard that, he said, ma yakrahun. They give to Allah. When he was blind, they gave him to Allah. When he got his sight back, uh, he goes for something else. So when Allah is saying, give from the best, give from the best of what you have earned. Where did you earn it from? Allah gave it to you in the first place. From what we give them, they give out. So give out good. Don't give out the radi. And this comes from a hadith. When a man came, he gave something worthless as charity. And the Prophet said, It's bit sama sana'a. What a terrible thing he's done. Right? This is not sadaqa. This is like a rummage sale at church. Now even some of the mosques in America have rummage sales. What, do you, what are rummage sales? You know what a rummage sale is? It's when people get the worst things in their house that they want to, to throw away, and they go and donate it to the church. It's just an easy way of dumping stuff. Most of it they just throw out. So they give it to the church instead. Right? That's what they do. That's a rummage sale. You rummage around, look at things you're not using, things that you don't want anymore. People, when they're going to throw away things, they all oh, will donate it. So go donate it to someone. I mean, people donate. Mosques get computers that are, you know, 186 or something like that, if they even have that one. <laughs> now it's, I don't even know what it is. But they give them these old computers. Oh, we want to give sadaqa to the masjid. Keep your sadaqa. Really, keep the sadaqa. It's garbage. That's all you're doing. You're just getting rid of your garbage and maybe you want to feel good about getting rid of your garbage. I don't know. But that's not what, that's not what Allah is asking us to give out. He's saying, give out min tayyibati ma kasabtum from the good of what you have earned. Now, look at the beauty of the sharia. When Mu'adh ibn Jabal was sent to Yemen, the Prophet ﷺ told him, first call them to La ilaha illallah. That's Tawheed. And that's awliyat. When you go to somebody, you don't say, you know what, 
you, you have to give up drinking, you have to give up fornication, you have to give up. He might be enjoying all those things. And then, then you tell him because la ilaha illallah. See, and then he says, no, 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 I can't give up all these things. Why are you doing that to that person? Tell him first, la ilaha illallah. If he accepts that, he's a Muslim. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Now he's a Muslim. He can be a bad Muslim. Better a bad Muslim than a good kafir. Really. It's a better to be a bad Muslim than a good kafir. Not in this world, right? In this world, you would prefer a good kafir to a bad Muslim because of mu'amalat. You know, you'd, you'd rather, if you have a choice between dealing with a bad kafir, a good kafir in his mu'amalat, he's honest, he's upright, he's, and you have a bad Muslim, you're going to choose the, 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 the good kafir because that's for dunya. But for akhirah, the, that bad Muslim has better chance. So let, the, let him in. It's like uh, 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 Sheikh Abdullah, uh, Sayyid Abdullah, from, he was from Kamaro Islands. He was a scholar that I met years ago. But uh, he was once, somebody, one of the imams at the Central Mosque asked him to go meet this doctor, English doctor. And he went and he said, I've been talking to this man, but we have a problem. So he said, he went to the English doctor and he met him and he said, what's, uh, what's the problem? He said, oh, I, Islam is amazing. I've been treating Muslim patients and I really, I've read about it and, and I just realized that this is the truth. And, and uh, this, he said, alhamdulillah, then you're Muslim. And the, the imam was saying, no, no, tell him the rest, what you told me. He said, well, I have a problem. He said, what's that? He said, uh, you know, I work, I'm a physician, I do surgeries, I have that praying on those times is very difficult. I just, I won't be able to stop doing things, this and that. He said, yeah, and what else? Tell him more. What, what else did you tell me? He said, well, uh, the zakat is fine. I don't have any problem with that. I can do that. But that fasting, I'm diabetic, you know, I can't fast. And he said, alhamdulillah. And then he said, what else? He said, well, Hajj also. He said, I I'm, have uh, agoraphobia. I don't like to be in big crowds. And the idea of going on Hajj is just too much. He said, what else? He said, well, I drink a glass of wine every night. You know, I've done it all my life. And just, and Sheikh Abdullah, he listened to all that. And then, now you can't put stipulations on coming into Islam. <laughs> but what he told him, he said, you know what? I can take you around the Muslim world and introduce you to thousands, maybe tens of thousands of Muslims that don't pray, <laughs> they don't fast, they don't, they even drink, they do things, but they still, they're Muslim, because if you say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, you're Muslim. And that's Miftah al-Jannah. You know, don't let, you know, don't put barriers in people coming to, into Islam. Let them come into Islam. And then let them work it out. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu did. There was Sahaba, Sahaba, that did not, they still kept drinking. Alcohol. Sahaba. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari. Sayyidina Omar, Omar ibn al-Khattab, did the Had punishment on his own son for drinking. Omar ibn al-Khattab. A Muslim can do things that, that aren't right, they're wrong. He's still a Muslim. We're not Khawarij. People want the iman of angels. You know, they're Muslim now, they expect if somebody becomes Muslim, they have to be an angel. Why? Why do you expect that from somebody? Just let people come into Islam. And don't expect anything from them other than La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah because if they believe that, according to the hadith, they enter Jannah sooner or later. So he's, when he sent this man, he told him, call them to La ilaha illallah, Mu'adham and Jabal. And then he said, if they answer that, tell him Allah farada alayhim kham sarawat fin nar. Allah has made five prayers. This is awliyat, prioritizing. Now you tell him about prayer. He's agreed to tawheed. Now you tell him prayer. فَإِذَا أَجَابُوك if they, if they come to that. These are people of the book. He said that you're going to meet people. سَتَلْتَقِي بِقَوْمٍ uh, 
uh, Ahli Kitab. You're going to meet people that are from the people of the book in Yemen, meaning Jews, because there were a lot of Jews in Yemen. Call them to this, call them to this. And then he said, and then if they answer that, tell them that Allah farad alayhim zakata amwalihim. Tu'khadu min agniyahim wa turaddu ila fuqara'ihim wa iyaka wa kara'imi amwalihim. Wa iyaka wa kara'ima amwalihim. And woe to you in taking the best of their wealth. Don't take the best of their wealth. That's why in zakat, in the rules of zakat, when you learn zakat, you take the middle. You don't take the worst and you don't take the best. You take the wasat of the animals. You don't go in and take the best bulls they have. You don't take the best uh, camels they have. You, don't, you take the, the middle. You don't take the worst. They give to Allah what they don't want for themselves. You're relieving them by taking their weak animals, their sick animals. No, you take the middle. That's what. But when Allah asks us to give, when you take, you don't take the best. That's rahmah from Allah. But when He tells us to give, give the best. Give the best of what you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? مِن طَيِّبَاتِ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ وَمِمَّا أَخْرَجْنَا لَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ And what we have brought forth from the earth for you. Right? That's, that means a zakat of khadrawat, the green, the, the giving zakat of grain, giving zakat of, uh, of uh, dates. I mean, there's a khilaf. Abu Hanifa radiallahu said, you give zakat to everything that comes out of the earth, and that was his proof from this ayah. The other imams have hadith that they believe khassasu, uh, you know, the, the hadith khassasat al ayah, because the ayah is... Am, you know, it's amma, it's a, it's a general ayah. Give out from what we have brought forth from the earth for you. khabith, And don't seek out the foul. Minhu, tunfiquna, wadastum bi'akhidihi. You wouldn't take it yourselves. Don't give out what you yourselves wouldn't even take. Right? Because people, they donate uh, computers that are pieces of junk. They wouldn't take them if somebody offered them to them. Why are you giving it if you wouldn't take it yourself? That's what Allah is saying. Why are you giving something you wouldn't even take yourself? Right? وَلَسْتُمْ بِأَخِذِيهِ إِلَّا أَن تُغْمِضُوا فِيهِ Unless you overlook it. So something could also the haram. If you give something that's haram, there's people that t take their, uh, their uh, you know, things that are haram. Prophets that are haram. It's haram. There's haram prophet. They give those out. Right? If you knew what it was, you wouldn't do it. But you'll only take it if you overlook it. If you, uh, you know, ghamad al ain means to, to close the eye. So that's what Allah is saying. That you wouldn't take it unless you close your eye. You know, it's like bribes. You know, they bribe, they take it from the back. Kind of like not looking. Right? Close the eyes. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Allah is ghani. See, again, He's reminding you, I'm not asking this of you because I need it. Don't think, I'm not asking this of you. See, you have to understand, this message that Allah has sent, from, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this message. Allah doesn't need any of this. It's for your benefit. Not for the poor people. Even when you give zakat, don't think you're benefiting anybody. It's your benefit. And that's why the sunnah of giving zakat is to put your hand under and have theirs over. Because they're better than you. See, now people look at it like contempt, you know, looking down on people. No, you're supposed to actually see them as they're doing you a favor. You're not doing them a favor. Why? Khud min amwadihim. Take from their wealth this, this charity. Why? Because it purifies them. You're purifying yourself and giving charity. That's what you're doing. So when you're giving this poor person, that's his haq. When you give somebody their rights, you don't feel better than them. You don't feel better. If you're giving somebody their haq, it's a right. That's a right that Allah has given that person. So all you're doing is fulfilling a duty. When you fulfill a duty, don't feel that you're doing something. You're just doing the bare minimum. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, 
I'm cleaning my mother now. She, she was old and decrepit in her bed. He said, I'm cleaning my mother the way she used to clean me. Is this birr? Is this what birr al-walidain is, showing them righteousness? And he said, no. This is equity. This is, this is, to, you know, this is mukafa'a. You're just doing for her now what she did for you. Don't think this is extra. This is payback. That's all it is. You loan somebody something, you give it back. When your parents get old, you're supposed to take care of them. Why? Because look what they did for you for the first 15 years of your life. And look how Allah, His adil is that it's usually about 15 years of their life in which they don't have strength. Isn't it? Somebody till they're 65, 70, they're fine. If they live to be 80, you might spend 10 years looking after your parent. Well, what about the 10 years, the 15 years your mother spent? What about the nine months vomiting? What about the two years changing your diaper, cleaning your, uh, your feces and your urine, getting up in the night when you cried, worrying about you through your childhood sicknesses, right? Fixing food for you three times a day. What about all of that? What about that? What about that that your mother did for you? And then your father going out in the world to, to provide for you, to give you clothes, give you food. It's payback. And now in this culture, look what they do to their parents. They put them in old folks' homes. And they pay somebody that has no love for them they can't wait till the end of the shift. That's all they want. They just want the day to get over because they don't want to wipe. Why should I wipe this person's bottom? I don't even know that, people. When I worked in a hospital, it, it was very interesting because I noticed like Asian people would come in. They wouldn't let some of the Asian people come. They wouldn't let the nurses clean their parents. They would stay by the bedside. Really, and alhamdulillah, there's still most of the Muslims have that understanding as well. But they're losing it. You look at these young Muslims now, these children, seriously, you better start worrying. Look at them, because they're going to school with all these non-Muslims, and they're imbibing the same uh, understandings. They're watching uh, the cartoons that all make fun of parents. Right? They're watching the sitcomedies that make fun of parents. Like parents are the brunt of jokes in this culture. Your parents are stupid, they're, they don't know, they're uncool, they're unhip. Oh, this is, Dean is something else. It's teaching people to honor your parents. If you want honor from Allah, you better honor your parents. And this was, they had that commandment, honor thy parents. That was a commandment. It's not you should take care of your parents. It's a good thing to do to take care of your parents. No, honor thy parents. It's a command. It was, in, it was written in stone according to their own tradition on the tablets. Came down from on high. And now look how they treat their parents. There's comedians that their own parents are the brunt of their jokes. They make other people laugh by making fun of their parents. So you know that Allah is Ghani, He's Hamid. Allah has no need and He's praiseworthy. He's praiseworthy like uh, Shaykh ibn al-Habib said, وَفَضْرُكَ مَوْجُودٌ بِغَيْرِ وُجُودِنَا Your fadl, your bounty exists even if we didn't exist. You don't need us to be here to be al-ilah, to be al-malik. To be al Jabbar, to be al Aziz, to be al Qahir, to be al Mu'iz, al Muzil, al Mu'ati, al Mani', al Nafi', al Dar. You don't need us. You are perfect in yourself. Nothing perfects you. Your creation does not perfect you. Allah is perfect without His creation. He has no need of us to perfect His attributes. His attributes are perfect. This is fadl. It's just overflowing bounty. That's what all this is. All this tajalliyat, this whole world is just this bounty of Allah. 
Now, after telling us to do this, right, to spend out, what does he tell us now? Shaitan promises you impoverishment. This is what shaitan does. You see, shaitan promises you faqr. If you do this, if you give out the best of what you have, you'll be impoverished. Don't do that. Give out that, that the stuff you don't need. Ya'idukum al-faqr. He promises you poverty. Now, whether you believe in Allah or not, I mean, alhamdulillah, everybody in here believes in Allah, but out there, right, whether you believe in Allah or not, that is still going on. You see, this is the beauty of the Qur'an. The Qur'an applies its reality. It doesn't matter whether or not you believe it or not, it's happening because there's people out there, fear. It's all fear of provision. They're all worried. There was a Newsweek article that showed uh, the flood rising and there were these two people in total state of terror about when all the stocks were crashing. And what did it say? Are you scared yet? Have we got you scared yet? Are you scared yet? Right? And they're all scared. I might lose my job. Well, you might die tonight. I mean, that's the way I look at it. If you're going to be anxious, be anxious about something that's really probable, that you might not get through the day. If you're going to be anxious, the only real anxiety to have in this world, as far as I can see, is anxiety about death. That's the big one. Forget all that other stuff. Because there's no guarantee about that one. Right? So why are you going to worry about poverty? That's all he can do. Oh, you might be impoverished. You might lose your job. I might die too. Right? That's the response to shaitan. Can you promise me life? Can you give me a signed contract? And even if he did, don't believe him. Because he's a liar. So shaitan ya'idukum al-faqr wa ya'murukum bil-fahsha. So he promises you poverty and then what does he do? Wa ya'murukum bil-fahsha. Why? Because he needs first to get you anxious. And then he can command you to do something that's, that's bad. Now, if you look at this, Ibn Hazm, the great Andalusian scholar, said that the foundational state of humanity is anxiety. Man was created in anxiety. Hala. That's the state of human beings. Hala. I mean, it even sounds like anxious. The word. Hala. <laughs> I mean, it does. Hala. That's a strong word. I mean, it sounds, it's scary. Hala. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the state of human beings. Halua. Halua. Look what the child, he comes out. What is this place? That's the first thing he's thinking. He's looking around. What is this place? I was in this nice place. It was all, I was floating around. It was all cushioned, right? You bumping up against that nice cushion of the womb, that nice heartbeat, right? Lub dub, lub dub. It's, it's nice. They were in training with that. They felt comfortable. They had an umbilicus. They didn't have to worry about food. It was coming all the time into the, into the, uh, the, the, the belly, right? They didn't have to. Now they feel hunger. They want the breast. And then the first thing that happens, they get that cut off. What did you do? <laughs> That's the first thing that happens. And then boom, they slap him on the bottom, right? Pinch him to get them breathing. Because they're in a state, of, when, you're, when you're in tone like that, you can't even breathe. That's what they're at. They're going, and then boom, and they, ah, and they start crying. That's hella. They're in anxiety. That's human being. Look at that. That's how you came into the world. And how do people go out of the world, right? <laughs> Heart attack. Oh, what's happening? What's going on? No, seriously. Look at human beings. And then everything that happens. Oh my God, you know, I forgot my keys. What? Just relax. <laughs> right? Relax. My wallet. Right? You feel, where's my wallet? <laughs> I just, my purse. Where did I put? Why, you, why all that anxiety? 
That's human beings. It's a pathetic creature. Really, we're pathetic. Right? When he gets good, what's he do? Hold it back. He won't give out. Why? He's in anxiety. See, he's saying, give out. Why won't you give out? Because your, your fear of poverty. When good afflicts him, he won't give out. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرْ جَزُوعًا right? Goes into جَزَعْ هَلَعْ مَنَعْ Look at that state of human being. It's all fear, worry. Right? So Ibn Hazm said, the whole foundation of the human being is this state of anxiety. Right? It's all fear. And, and shaitan knows that because he knows us. He has a good knowledge of our psychology. Some of the ulama say that shaitan here means a nafs al-ammara. That it's actually the, 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 the soul. Because the soul is a shaitan as well. Nafs al-ammara is a shaitan. Shaitan in Arabic means the disobedient. Somebody who's in disobedience. There's shaitan al-ins, shaitan al-jinn, and then there's shaitan al-nafs. So this is the promise of shaitan. You're going to be impoverished. Don't give out. Don't give out. That's what he says. Now, Ibn Hazm said, the whole foundation of man's behavior, it can all be interpreted as tardul ham. That's what he said. Tardul ham. That's all human beings are trying to do. Stave off anxiety. He said, every human action that you see, you can interpret it as an attempt to remove anxiety. Why do you eat? The anxiety of hunger. Why do you put on your clothes? The anxiety of cold or the anxiety of humiliation for being naked, right? For exposing yourself. It's all about anxiety. Why do people go out and seek wealth? Anxiety about poverty. Why do people seek love of leadership? Anxiety about feeling like you're insignificant in the world. See, Napoleon is just a massive infant. He wants to Go out and conquer the world. Genghis Khan. These are infants that use the world as their crib. And it's all about feeling important. Going to prove to the world who I am. That I'm great, magnificent. Alexander the Great conquered the known world by the age of 33. What was driving him? What was the... What was the drive in him that wanted him to do that? Right. Immortality, Gilgamesh. His attempt at immortality. That's what human beings do. Everything that you see them doing. Why do we seek out friends? Fear of solitude. The anxiety of being alone. Why do people turn on music? Anxiety of silence. Silence creates anxiety. Americans, they've done studies where if they close their eyes and start meditating, a lot of Americans have acute anxiety attacks just from, from meditating. Why do people fear surgery? Loss of consciousness. People are afraid of being helpless. Right? All these things, it's all fear. That's what it is. And shaitan knows that. So, يَعِذُكُمْ الْفَقَرْ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ Because what happens is if you have anxiety, that's when, see, even shahwa, people will fulfill their shahwa. Why? Because fear of missing a pleasure. The anxiety of missing a pleasure. So they'll actually fulfill a pleasure because they're afraid of missing it. There's children, they hate to go to sleep. They don't want to go to sleep. Why? Because they're going to miss something. They want, really, they want to stay awake. That consciousness is amazing. They don't want to go to sleep. That's why it's difficult to put a child down. They'll go until they drop. But to actually get them in bed and have them lie down, it's very difficult to do that. Because they think they're going to miss something. This is the way human beings are. They're, they're, they have anxiety. Everything's anxiety. It's all anxiety. Hum, hum, hum. Right? Himma is aspiration. It comes from the same root, anxiety. So your himma is related to anxiety. Why do, you, why, why do people seek knowledge? Fear of ignorance, fear of people treating them with contempt. In this culture, it's a big thing in this culture. If you don't have a degree, 
right? If you don't have a, they don't care even if you have a phony degree. They'll hang a phony degree on the wall. There's people that'll pay money to get themselves in who's who and why are you wasting your money? You didn't do anything. Or get there, pay a thousand dollars. You can get a thousand dollars and you'll be given some uh, thing that says you're one of the top doctors in America. You can pay it. Hang it in your office. Why are you doing that? You didn't do it. You just had a thousand dollars to give away to a for-profit organization. You would have been better off giving it to a non-profit organization. And then you really would have been one of the best doctors in America. But only Allah would know. Uh, but you don't want that. You want other people to know. Right? Not enough that Allah knows. Because how does that benefit me in the world? All these benefits people want. It's all trying to get something. Everybody wants. What? That's why cynics, because they know themselves so well, they can only interpret everybody else. What's the bottom line? What's his agenda? What's he really trying to get? See, that's a cynic because that's his state. Right? It's from a Greek word, dog-like. Right? That's what a cynic is. They're like dogs. That's why when the munafiqun, see, they wouldn't do anything that they didn't have some worldly benefit for it. They didn't like Isha and Fajr because it was at dark, nobody could see them. When they went to Dhuhr, uh, Asr and Maghrib, people could see them. They say, oh, so-and-so was in the prayer line. But Isha and Fajr, was, it was dark. There was no electricity in Medina. And if it wasn't a moonlit night, they didn't want to go. Nobody would notice they weren't there. Allah would. That's not a major concern. So this is the sickness of the soul. So he says, everybody's just trying to remove this anxiety, this state of hala. Ibn Hazm said that they'll go to great lengths to do this expend their energy and he said and yet they won't be able to get rid of it because no matter how much money you have you want more the more they get the more they want they never get satiated that's what Imam al-Busiri in the Burda he said don't don't fulfill your appetites thinking that you'll break it right he said haven't you seen how the the gorman the glutton only increases in his desire for food the more he eats. That's the nature. The more you get, the more you want. There's a hadith, لا يملأ فاء ابن آدم إلا تراب قبره Nothing will fill the mouth of the son of Adam except the dirt of his grave. That's the only thing. لو كانت له واد من ذهب had he had a, a valley of gold, he just wants another valley of gold. That's Ibn Adam. That's his state. If he has a valley of gold, he wants another valley. He does, لا يشبع. Right? There's no شبع. طمع. You know, one of the, the grammarians noted that all the letters of طمع have circles in them. طا, عين, uh, meme and ain because he said that's the nature of tama it's hollow in the middle it's just always empty tama just more and more yatma yatma and look at shaba which is to be shaba to sheen yatafasha it spreads out ba closes the the hollow, and then Ain is the source, the jof. So it gets filled. Right? That's what shaba'tu. I can't eat anymore. I'm full. Shaba'a. So then he, what, so this is what shaitan does. He gets, do that, do that. You need to do that. No, 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 take it, even though it's haram. If you don't do it, you're gonna, you'll miss out, and that's stupid. So it's all promises of dunya. Worldly gain. This is what shaitan promised. It's all worldly gain. He can't promise you the next world. He makes you fear this world. You love the ajila. What is the ajila? The immediate world. What is shaitan? What's his, his favorite thing? Ajala. Al ajala tu min shaitan. Immediacy is from shaitan. Your immediate needs. You have immediate needs. Don't give out. What does Allah say? 
You won't gain righteousness until you give out what you love. Not what you don't love. Anybody can do that. Anybody can give those computers they want to throw away. But who can give that brand new computer they just bought for themselves when they see that somebody needs it for the sake of Allah? Right? Who can give that money that when the stock drops, right? You, it's easy to give your, your stocks. They were worth $80. Now they're worth $2. Well, I'll just donate them to the masjid. That's easy to do. It's, it's, it's when they were riding high. Well, I'll just wait. And then shaitan, even if you want to give, he'll say, no, just wait. They'll get higher. He wants to, he'll work every angle. That's the nature of shaitan because he's the con man. He's the guy that does the shell game. Right? Flipping the shells around, the peas in one of them. I can see it. I just, I, I've got, I'm going to work this out. That's what the shell game is based on. These guys that sit on the streets and do the shell game, it's based on you watching him and you think, ah, I know where the shell is. You didn't see him take the pea out. It's not even there. It's sleight of hand. That's what shaitan's doing. It's all sleight of hand. And then in the end, you get cheated. Right? That's what he does. And then what's he do? Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Blame yourselves. You got the message. You heard the warning. You, you were given all his strategies. You were told who he is. Now the question is, do you really believe? Do you believe the book? <laughs> right? Do you really believe this? Because it's there. Don't think it's not there. All of you have it. You all know it. You want to give out, but you think, I need that. It's hard to do. You heard it. Right? You heard it. Oh, but you know, saving is from Islam too. Right? So you'll justify it. You'll work it all out in your mind. Make it all work. Why is it that when people's iman is, is high, they give out? Why is that? There's people that won't give out and then their iman shoots up and boom, they give out. Why is it only when the iman's high? I mean, isn't that interesting? Why don't people give out when the iman's low? You see what? I mean, it's about iman. And then you find out when you give it out, you didn't lose it. Right? I mean, I once, I had something I loved so much. And I was in the mosque of the Prophet and there was an old sheikh there and he just had his eye on this and I really didn't want to give it away but I'm thinking I'm in the mosque of the prophet this old man's here I said bismillah I still think about it every once in a while <laughs> you know but sometimes I think maybe that'll get me into paradise because he was so happy but maybe if I wasn't in the masjid of the prophet I wouldn't have done that Really, maybe I wouldn't have done it. Maybe if I was here, I wouldn't have done it. Just would have ignored him. And then when we walked away, Sheikh Abdullah Wulda Ahmed, who was with me, he said, Tama, ushkila. <laughs> because the man, he really wanted it from me. It was mine, but he wanted it. And he let me know he wanted it. And so that was his Tama, right? That, that wanted the khalas. I, you know what, big deal. He was a poor man. I could, I could go if I wanted now, I could go get, replace it, really. Most of the things that you have, you could replace. If you gave away your Lexus, you could replace it. Seriously, think about that. Most of the things you really have, you could replace them. Might take a little time, but you can do it. So why, why, why the fear? Because maybe I can't. Maybe I won't be able to. That's all waham. That's waham. Right? What a beautiful word, waham. It's a beautiful word, waham. Begins harf illa. It's a weak radical, wow. It's the weakest one, wow. And then ha, coming from that empty source. Ha comes from the jof, right? And then meme. It ends up mm, nothing there. Right? Just close your mouth, waham. Waham is illusion, right? That's what this, this whole thing is, just a bunch of waham. Everything you own is waham. Your own family's waham. You're waham. The whole thing, really, it's all waham. Right? Al-wahmu huwa al-hijabu. 
That is the veil. All this illusion. Because we're all going to die. We, we leave this place. It goes. It's, it just, we leave it. Every single one of us. There were people a thousand years ago teaching Quran. A thousand years ago. Think about that. 1400 years ago. People reading this verse that I'm reading now. Here we are today in California looking at a verse. There was somebody giving tafsir a thousand years ago. Telling people. A thousand years ago. Shaitan ya'idukum al faqar. Right? He was telling. Now they're all gone. They're all dead. There he was. The wa'il. Reminding people, look, it's here, it's true. Believe it. Some did, some didn't. But they all died. So he commands you to fahsha because he's got you in that state of anxiety. If you're not in that state of anxiety, he's got no power over you. That's why he knows, at first I have to get him anxious. Then I can, then I can tell him, don't give out. Because if he's not anxious, he'll just give out. And shaitan has no power. So his power is anxiety. يَعِدُكُمْ بِالْفَقْرِ الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِدُكُمْ بِالْفَقْرِ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَةِ وَاللَّهُ يَعِدُكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً مِّنْهُ But what does Allah promise? مَغْفِرَةً He forgiveness. مِنْهُ It's not just مَغْفِرَةً It's مِنْهُ Allah could have said وَاللَّهُ يَعِدُكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً That's enough in the Arabic language. He promises you forgiveness, but he says maghfiratan minhu, just to let you know. Because idham and mu'ti, right? Yadullu ala idham and mu'ta. The vastness of, of the giver indicates the greatness of the gift. Maghfira from Allah. Now, what does, see, what is shaitan promising you? He's promising you something which is waham. Do you understand that? Will you become impoverished? Maybe you will, but maybe you won't. Now we know if it's about sadaqah, what does the Prophet ﷺ say? Wealth is not diminished by charity. That's a promise. So if you believe in Allah, His promise is false. But even if we grant that He يَعِدُكُمْ الْفَقْرِ Maybe you will become impoverished, but maybe you won't. It's only probable. Now what is it in relation to? What is his promise in relation to? The dunya. It's only related to dunya. He's not promising that you're going to be impoverished in the akhirah. That's what will happen if you don't give out in the dunya. He's working on your love of dunya. He's working on your, your love of being in the world. That's what he's wanting. What is Allah? Promising. Maghfira in the akhirah. Minhu from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His wa'ad is about akhirah. It's about in infinity. It's not about finite. It's not about, you know, you're going to lose $100,000. You're going to lose two hundred. No, this is about infinity. Maghfira minhu. Wa fadlan. And bounty. Fadl. In other words, you'll have bounty in the world as well. He's promising you that. Because Allah is not promising you scarcity. Allah, the, the, the whole crux of, 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 of this sentiment in the Qur'an is that we live in a bounteous universe. We have a bounteous Lord. See, there's two ways of looking at the world. There's the way of scarcity, and then there's the way of bounty. These people are all, it's all about scarcity. There's not enough water. The water tables are dropping, right? There's not enough gas. Oil's about to go out. Right? There's not enough food. There's going to be great famines. It's all fear. Do you see? This is what they're working on. It's all fear. There's not enough jobs to go around. There's to overpopulation. There's not enough land. It's all scarcity. That's what they do. Because shaitan, this is all. Don't think. Believe that this is true. Quran is telling us the truth. And this is what they're working on. They're playing on anxieties. Right? The topsoil is disappearing. Right? All this fear. It's all about fear, fear, fear. Look at the earth. There was a time in America when, when they said a squirrel could go from the east coast to, to Oregon and not touch the ground. There were so many trees. They're all gone. Right? They're all gone. 
The same is true of North Africa. People don't realize this. North Africa, Africa used to be jungles. The word in Arabic where Marab al-Haj lives is called Taganit, which means in Berber, it means jungle. It's a desert now. Who made it a desert? Right? It was made a desert by the Arabs. Ibn Khaldun said Bani Hilal crossed North Africa like locusts. See, we're not the only one. I mean, they, they think now these are the only people that have ever been guilty of, of crimes against the earth. It's an old, old thing. The, the Romans, the Muslims did it. We made our mistakes. Many people made our mistakes. M many people made these mistakes. But look at how each, at each level, when, when f what was the primary fuel of the earth? Initially, wood. Wood's all gone. We're worried now about what there, what's left if it's produced enough oxygen for us. Then what showed up after wood? When all the forests were gone? Coal. Where'd that come from? Hidden all that time. Why didn't people discover it when there was no wood? And then coal started causing all the problems and, 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 and diminishing in numbers. Then what shows up? Oil. And now oils is going to go. It's going to disappear. Put everybody in a state of anxiety. Why, why is it that everything man needs, man gets provided for? His needs are met. They've always been met. They've never not been met. We're still here after all these millennia. Still eating, still drinking, still procreating. But when you're not in a state of devotion, Allah will meet your needs, but they'll harm you. So our fuel is toxic. We still get it, but it's toxic. If we were doing the right thing, Allah would give us things that didn't harm us. But He does that. Why? Maybe they'll return to it. Maybe they'll enter into a state of humbleness and beg for help. That's, that is all done for a reason. So this is what shaitan does. Wallahu ya'idukum maghfiratan minhu wa fadla. Wallahu wasi'un. Allah is vast. Alim. All knowing. Shaitan is not vast. Shaitan is not all knowing. Now, after all of this, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? You would see hikmah to man yasha. But this is wisdom. The people that are able to understand this are wise people. And he gives his wisdom to whomever he pleases. The Quran is what? Al Quran al Hakim. It's the wise Quran. And whoever is given hikmah is given great good. But only people of innermost core remember this. Lub. Lub is, is the seed, it's the pith. People of pith, weighty people, pithy people. Weighty people, not empty people. Because human beings are between aql and humq. Aql is intelligence, humq is foolishness. And what's in between is sukh. Sakhif. That's why most people, if you look out there, are in a state of hamaka. Even the intelligent people, they're all in a state of hamaka. Stupidity. Because what is an aql? Allah says about the kuffar, hum qawmun la yaqilun. They're people that don't use their aql. What is aql? What does aql? What is the benefit derived from aql? Is that you're able to weigh things? Intellectus in Latin means to, to, to judge between things. Aql enables you to judge between falsehood and truth in the ma'qulat, in the intelligibles, and right and wrong in the mu'amalat. You have ma'qulat and you have mu'amalat. Aql is the ability to judge between truth and falsehood in the intelligibles, and between right and wrong in the transactions. So the human being has a rational and a moral component. Both of them are related to the intellect. And that is what the aql is. The aql ya'qiluka an al batil. It prevents you from falling into falsehood. We ya'qiluka an al haram. 
and it prevents you from entering into the wrong in your moral transactions. That's what aql is. So if you see people out there, no matter how intelligent they are, no matter how, see, daha is cleverness. What's called daha. The Arabs have words for all these things. We used to. A clever person is not an aql. For instance, uh, you know, there's Wall Street people, Boski type people. There's no doubt that they're clever. They, they're dahiya. They have daha. But it's not aql. Because their, their, their cleverness does not prevent them from doing wrong and does not encourage them to do right. So in the end, like the Arabs say, قَتْرُهُ ذَكَأُهُ His cleverness killed him. Ibn Tamiya called one man, he's one of the philosophers, he said, ذِكِي غِيرُ ذِكِي He was clever but not pure. ذِكِي غِيرُ ذِكِي So you want aql, that's what we want. لَعَلَكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ that's what this is all about. It's learning to use the intellect. And the intellect is trained by education first and foremost. You have to educate the mind. The mind, is, is, the mind has Im amazing innate abilities, but it also has amazing innate flaws. And that's what learning does. It, it, it separates what's good from the intellect from what's bad. Because the intellect will trip you up. Just like an aql can stop you, prevent you from the truth as well. The iqal, the thing that the aql can do that. Ibn Hazm says that the majority of people have this quality of sukh. They'll talk about things of no benefit to them. He said that they'll desire things that can. He said the world is like this. He said it's like a wheel being turned by a, a torrent. You know, like these water wheels, but there's a torrent coming down. He said you can't stop the wheel. He said, all your wishes are empty wishes. You're not going to change things by wishing. You change things by engaging the world. So that's what he said. You can spend your life just talking about things. And then there's other people that go out and, and do things. They engage the world. They change things. And they're easy to criticize those people. But the people that criticize them are people sitting on the sidelines. That's who, that's who criticizes. You'll always see the critics are people on the sidelines. They're not in the world. They're not engaging the world. They're just watching. Oh, look at that guy. He's trying to do this. Look at that person. It's so stupid. This and that. That's, it's an empty life. And then when they die, they just find out. They just wasted their life. He said it's better to have a good opinion of everybody, have good feelings, good will towards everybody. He said have good will towards everybody. Desire good for everybody on the planet. Why desire uh, evil for people? It, it comes from an empty source. People that want... Uh, the destruction of another people, people that want... I mean, there are some evil people on the world. There's no doubt. There are people, they're, they're just evil. The majority of people, uh, they're just, they're fence sitters. What you need to do is t tip the fence over. Inshallah.